Hi friends, I'm Jess and welcome to the Hex Library where I post reading, writing, book and planner related content a couple of times a week. Today it's going to be my wrap up for the month of March. March was a crazy month. It started off crazy, it ended crazy. Mid-March, I started doing Cultmas, which is 30 books in 30 days. We talked about that a little bit in my TBR for the month of April, because I'm still like half into April trying to do that. I'm not gonna make it, but I'm trying. I've read a lot of books. I read 18 books in March for a total of 5,882 pages, which is to say, a lot. My average rating was a four out of five stars, which is also fairly high for me. Um, it's been lower the past couple of months. My reading has also been lower the past couple of months. I think January and February I both read eight books and 18 in March, so it's been a time. I've already read quite a few in April as well. So all of the things. First thing I want to talk about, I did read two books this month that were St. Martin's Press titles, so we will not be talking about those. I did write um, like a tiny review and post it on my Instagram page, and you can find that in my um, highlight reel of um, books read in 2024, um, where I blocked out the covers, but then wrote the review. So a sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Know that because we're only going to be talking about 16 books, I read, eight, read 18, two of them were books um, that were St. Martin's Press titles. So as always, we will start with my rereads, which I had two of, the first of which was Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. I read that as part of my local indie bookstores book club for the month of March. I didn't rate it again. I think I originally gave it four stars. I didn't like it as much the first time I read it. And then the second time I read it, I liked it more. And this was my third time that I've read it and I liked it less again. And honestly, I think a lot of that is just because a lot of the things that the teenagers were doing, I'm at the age where I'm like, these people are stupid. <laughs> if you've read The Perks of Being a Wallflower, it's a fairly popular one. A lot of people, especially in my age bracket, um, read it. I was born in the mid 80s and a lot of us read it. It was very popular when I was in high school. The movie was popular after I was out of high school, so a lot of us have read it. And there are definitely things in there that we're able to connect with and things that like are interesting, but for the most part, it was just okay. It's not my favorite story, but it's better than the other things we've read so far this year for book club, so at least there's that. I also reread Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass as part of the Mass Effect read along. I will put uh, Bethany's video, the announcement video down below. We are rereading the entire Mass verse um, starting last month with Throne of Glass, so you're, it's not too late to catch up if you want to. If you've been wanting to tackle this series with a group of friends, or if you have been wanting to reread it or reading it for the first time, there's a large group of us that are reading it. Bethany is hosting, and then there's myself and a few others who are doing co-hosting. Co I am the only one who has not read the series. Everyone else, it's a reread for them. For me, um, I've read the first and second book of Throne of Glass, and that's it. I haven't read any of A Court of Thorns and Roses. I haven't read any of the new series that I can't think of what the name is right now off the top of my brain. You know what one I'm talking about. Crescent City. I knew I would get there eventually. I've read none of those, and I've only read books one and two of Throne of Glass, and I liked them when I read it, and I did like the book again this time when I read it. Um, I didn't dislike it. I read it the first time in 2019. At the time, it was like, this is a huge series, and she has so much that she's written, and I just don't, like, I've already heard so many spoilers about it and all of these things, and I was just like, you know, I don't, I don't really care. But Bethany was looking for people to co-host with her, and I was like, you know, I am really falling into the land of peer pressure right now when it comes to reading books. I mean, I was peer pressured into doing Realmathon by Aoife. I was peer pressured into Cultmas by Aoife. I was peer pressured into reading The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden. That's the one. I ended up loving that book. I won't talk about that at the end of April. And like, so I'm falling deep into the land of peer pressure when it comes to reading. And I was like, the urge to read this entire series with you guys is really high. And Bethany was like, do it. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll do it. Oh, I was also peer pressured into reading Wheel of Time. I forgot about Wheel of Time. I'm also reading Wheel of Time very slowly, but I'm 
I'm doing it. Um, the group, I think, is on book four, and I'm still on book two, but I'll get there eventually. I'll catch up. It's fine. So yeah, all of the peer pressure when it comes to reading, and I was like, fine, I'll do it. We have a group chat for those of us who are hosting, and I was like, just so you all know, I haven't read past book two, but feel free to do all of the spoilers because I don't care because I've seen most of them on Instagram reels. You know, I, anytime I see one, I sit there and I'll watch through it, especially because some of the people who do them are like my favorite. I love to watch like their commentary on it. And now I'm like, you know, if nothing else, I get to enjoy reading the series for knowing the context of these creators on Instagram that I already love <laughs> because they put out this content. Um, so it was, it was an interesting time. Um, and like I said, if you're interested in looking into joining us for Throne of Glass. I will link that down below. Now we'll get into the books that I actually rated, starting at the lowest, working our way up to the highest, and we're starting at a 3.25 out of 5 stars. And for that, I have From Below by Darcy Coates. This book takes place under the ocean in a very like dead zone under the ocean. So like things don't really grow there. And there's a group of people who are trying to find the ship and then go onto the ship and check out and see what happened because it suspiciously sank 80 years prior or something like that. And so we're following this group as they go down and do a couple of dives into this ship and what happens once they get there. For me, this book was definitely atmospheric in the way that Darcy's books are, but I have always preferred her Haunted House books to her more sci-fi horror. Um, the Haunted House books really work for me. The more sci-fi vibes don't work for me as well. I do still enjoy them, but I feel like this could have been a little shorter and it would have been a more enjoyable read. It's also like these people follow such stupid things sometimes, you know, and you're just like, okay, but why? Why would you do that? Also, this is one of those books where um, I, I oftentimes like will send my best friend reels or I'll send her messages about um, something that I read somebody doing in a book and I'm like, just so you're aware. <laughs> And this is one of those. Just so you're aware, if we ever decide to go and go into a haunted ship and you do XYZ and XYZ happens, I'm leaving your ass there. I'm not coming in to save you. Like, I... <laughs> We have a very transparent friendship where I'm like, if your house is haunted and you ask me to spend the night and these things happen, I'm leaving you, you there. You're on your own. No, <laughs> just so we're clear. And I love that about these books because you can't really look at them like that as like a, if this happened to me, what would I do? The first answer is I'm not diving beneath the ocean. I don't like boats. I've seen the Titanic. I'm not interested. But also the idea of being underwater, like to me, even though the ocean is such a grand space that is so claustrophobic to me because like you're in a wetsuit and that wetsuit is your lifeline. To me, that is so horrifying. There's no, no. It's like space. You're all alone, but it's claustrophobic. So I'm, I'm good. I think I'll, I think I'll stay on earth on the dirt. I think that's where I feel more safe. It was a good book. Darcy writes good books. She hasn't written a bad book. I haven't read a book by her that was bad. Just some of them I don't like as much as the others. Also at a 3.25 out of 5 stars was Glaciers by Alexis M. Smith. This was one of my 12 books by 12 friends for this year. It was the only one I've read so far, but hey, we're getting there. Um, this follows a girl and it's like a one day love story where we're seeing her um, with this guy that she has a romantic interest in, but this entire relationship between the two of them takes place in a single day. But we're switching between that and her past and getting stories from her past and learning about how she became the woman that she is. And this book had some really beautiful writing and some very like lyrical writing style. And there was a lot of passages that were just like actually listening to them, especially when she's talking about um, feelings and emotions and things like that, that really just fit into 
your brain in a way that it gives you the endorphins where you're like, yes, this is exactly like, I wish I had something that made me feel like that. You know, it just gives you that vibe. And while I had that and I enjoyed that, it was the past timeline and it jumping around. Um, if you've been here before, you know that I really struggle with books where the timeline is not linear. I can do multiple timelines so long as like the present day and the past are both linear themselves. You know what I mean? Like the past is all in one line and the day is all in one line. Or even if we're going backwards in time, it continues to go backwards in, you know, it's all backwards. I can't do jumping around back and forth because I get so confused and I have no idea what's happening and I just get lost. Because the past timeline does that, it kind of jumps around and the stories that you're getting about her family and relationships and her childhood, like the stories that you're getting, the bits and pieces are done so well. But as far as like it coming together as an entire book, it didn't really work for me. But if you like stories like that, where you're getting like a one day love story, but also this entire past history of this person and like what made them who they are, then I think that you would really enjoy it. Next set of 3.5 out of 5 stars, we have Ride of Your Life by PJ Knight. This is book 18 in the Creepover series. These are just short mid-grades that have something spooky going on. This is a four on the creep meter It's one through five. It's a four out of five on the creep meter And this is one that I texted my best friend about and was like, okay, if we go to a haunted carnival and we figure, I figure out while we're there that if we stay there past midnight, we're going to be stuck in this haunted carnival forever. And you don't believe me. I want you to be aware that I am leaving you there. I am not going to stick around and try to convince you to leave when it's five minutes till midnight. I'm just leaving and you're going to have to be stuck at this haunted carnival forever. And I will not be. So that is basically the premise of this book. These two girls, um, go to this carnival and it's, weird. You know, this one does have one of my favorite endings where you don't really know what the ending is going to be. And you don't like, sometimes you'll get these and at the end of it, you find out that it's not actually anything spooky or you'll get to it. And the end is not, you know, it's very clear cut and dry and you're just like, okay, whatever. But some of these have a nondescript ending where you're like, okay, so what happens? I don't know. And this is definitely one of those. And I did enjoy that about it. Again, anytime I have to text my best friend and be like, so you're aware. And then when I say those things, she goes, is this a book or a dream you had, or am I in trouble? <laughs> Haunted kids at a carnival. At a 3.75 out of 5 stars, we have The Teacher by Frieda McFadden. This was an arc that I read um, after the arc came out as per usual. The story is has like three main characters, if you will. There is a teenage student, an adult woman, and an adult man. And it's one of those things where there's like kind of a relationship between the teenage girl and the adult man. So you know that going in. Something happens to the wife and then you have to figure out who done it. And it's, it's a, th it's a, it's a time. Um, I did guess like some of the bigger plot was from the beginning and while that didn't really impact my enjoyment of the story, there definitely were a little bit of things here and there where I was like, okay, like I can't suspend my, my belief that much. You know, there's, there's a, there's a way that you can suspend your belief and you can kind of like follow along with the story and have a good time. And I, and now that I have read a second Frieda McFadden book, I know that that is really her thing is that you're just there to have a good time. And, and you just have to just completely just put all of like the normal things that are going to happen in the real world out of your mind, hop into the story and have a good time. And you will have a good time. If you think about it too hard, you won't, but if you just go to have a good time, you will have a good time. Um, again, 3.75 is a great rating. I did have a great time. It was a fun read, um, but you definitely need to know that it does involve like an age gap romance and also a, which I guess isn't even really an age gap romance. It's just a taboo romance um, because it's a teenage girl and her adult male teacher. It's, it's, in, it's good to know that going in. So, but it's kind of obvious from the title, right? Also at 3.75 out of five stars, we have Vengeance of the Pirate Queen by Trisha Levenseller. This is kind of the third book in a series. It's more of like a companion novel to the original duology that follows Sorenda. It is Sorenda. Uh, it follows Sorenda, who was Elosa's first mate in the first couple of books. And we're seeing her on her own ship as the captain. And she has Kieran with her, who was like 
the guy who was kind of in love with her in the first couple of books. That really is the enjoyable part of the story, okay? Like, the relationship between Sorenda and Kieran is what kept this book going for me. It was done so well, so beautifully. It was just their relationship was done so well. The actual plot of this book, I have no clue what the fuck was going on. I do know what was going on. There were zombies and and just like end of the world. It doesn't make any sense. Like the way that they were able to do the things they were able to do, zero sense. Like it, it doesn't even, it, it doesn't. Okay. I, <laughs> so it's like clearly Trisha was like, I need to write this romance, but also I'm going to need a plot. And she pulled the plot out of thin air and was like, meh, it'll do. Don't go in for the plot. Go in for the enjoyment of the romance between Sorenda and Kieran. And also, um, Rosalind, I believe is the name of the little girl from the first couple of books, um, who's a pirate. Uh, I think she's like eight or nine. She's also very heavily featured in this one. And I love her. She's super cute. She's super fun to read, um, as like a very young pirate. So she's in here as well. There are some other characters that we see in the first couple of books, but those are the main three that you really see during this book. Uh, but yeah, definitely, if you liked the romances from the first couple of books, then you should pick this one up. If not, the, pro the plot's probably not going to work for you, but it's fine. One we're not going to talk about very long, but at a four out of five stars, which volume 16, this is part four, the book of elements, volume four. No, part five. Part five, the book of elements, volume four. <laughs> but it's also issue 16. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Okay. I don't know why they number these so weird. Uh, but I give this a four to five stars. This one was actually really good. Um, I've been reading this series for a few years now. Again, this is number 16. So I'm definitely working my way through. This was my last one that I have. Typically what I do is these, um, the parts are usually three to four books a piece. Like this is what I would consider a book. There are three to four of these per part. And usually when I read the last the last book in a part, I will order the next part, however many books it is, three or four or whatever. Um, so this was the last one in these, so I need to order the next set. So this one has, if you know anything about the series, it used to also be a TV show. It's five young girls who are given powers of earth air, fire, water, and spirit, uh, or heart, if you will. And their job is to protect the mortal realm where they live from the other realms um, that can sometimes bleed over into their world. And this book had a character arc that followed a villain from a future or a past series. Is, is. And I really liked their character arc. There was also a character death in this book that um, really worked for the character. I mean, didn't really work for them in the fact that now they're dead, but <laughs> the way that they died was a good character moment for them. Um, it actually made me very sad. Um, I think it was done really, really well, especially for a kid's graphic novel series that's 16 issues in. Um, I did really enjoy this one. I typically enjoy the first and last of a, of a, of set of the of a part more so than the middle one the middle one is usually just like eh, we're here but the first and, and last are usually pretty good so this one was an enjoyable one speaking of the last of things i finally finished miss born erewhon i read the hero of ages i gave this a four out of five stars here's my thing the beginning of this was good because we were like you know seeing where everybody had been because there's a time jump between the end of book two and book three not a huge one but like a year or two there's a time jump. So we're catching up with all of our friends. The end of this book, fan-fucking-tastic. Everything that happens, everything happens for a reason. Like, it's it's all of the vibes, it's all of the emotions and the heart of the story um, of Vin and Elle and all of our friends and just everything that happened and you find out who the Hero of Ages is and why and the kind of person that they become and how they kind of resolve some of the issues of this world. Like all of that, so fantastic. But there's like a 200 page gap in here that is just like military strategy and nothing but military strategy for, it was a solid 100 pages, solid 100 pages, probably more than that. And I wish so much that that military strategy had been condensed down because it made it such a slog. If we had just cut down 
some of that military strategy, this would have been a five star book. But we didn't do that. We went full tilt military strategy for hundreds and hundreds of pages. And you know, I don't mind the military strategy part, like for something that is this heavily focused on um, military strategy and taking over an entire world and saving multiple races of people and doing all the things that this is doing makes sense. Like I get that they have to have military strategy, but I don't need that much of it. Um, some of this can happen behind the scenes, Brandon. Like, it doesn't all have to happen on the page. Sometimes that's an internal thought. You don't have to express it outwards. Um, but it's fine. It was good. It was, there were some reveals in this that were horrifying. There were a lot of reveals in this where we learned more about, um, the, um, the emperor from the original book and about, um, the other species and how some of the magics worked and him as a person. And it honestly, I don't want to say it made you feel sorry for him because he kind of was an asshole, but it definitely made you understand why he did some of the things that he did. And maybe he didn't make the right choice, but I don't think for some of these things there ever was a good choice to be made. Um, it was just very interesting. Very good. Definitely wanted to continue on reading more of the Branderson world. Um, I'm not going to jump straight into era two. I'm going to read some of the standalones first because I know that era one and era two are very different and I don't want to take this connection with me into era two. So I'm going to, I believe read Warbreaker next. Um, I'm reading a couple of the short stories, but then I will be Actually, I've read a couple of the short stories, but then I'll be hopping into Warbreaker fairly soon. Not to jump scare anybody, but it is a completely different day. So I at least put the same shirt on so you didn't have to jump scare too bad. It's been a few days. Something happened. I couldn't film anymore. I had to turn the filming off and then never got back to it. And here we are. And this is why it takes me 300 years to get a video out because things just keep happening. I think we left off at Hero of Ages. Uh, after Hero of Ages, I read Alamancer Jack and the Pits of Atlantia, possibly. Uh, I give that a four out of five stars as well. Um, that is one of the Brandon Sanderson books from the, from the bind up of short stories and novellas and things. I did like that one, so. And then at a 4.25 out of 5 stars, we have Totally Psychic by Bridget Martin. This is one of our Library Explorer blogs, so I will link it down below if you want like my full spiel of this book, but I did really enjoy it. I liked our main character. I liked her family and how we got to learn about them and their magics and the magic system. I wish there had been more um, character work in the Friends, um, but the plot was really well done and I enjoyed a lot about that book. Um, very good mid-grade with magic. And then at a 4.5 out of 5 stars, we have some kind Kind of Blunderful by Lily Hart. This was a arc that I read that was a romance that follows two characters. The beginning of the book is them like meeting up for a first date that goes awry. Um, neither of them really did anything wrong. They just both think they did something wrong. Um, so there's a little bit of miscommunication there, but they do like resolve that fairly quickly. Um, but they don't really get along the best. But then things keep happening where they keep ending up at the same place at the same time. Um, and there's even like a joke from our hero at one point where he says something about, do you want to sync up our calendars? That way we'll know when we're going to be meeting again next. Um, because it literally is just all of these things keep happening and they keep running into each other and it's super funny. Um, it was a really cute romance. There were some very weird moments, but it does not have a third act breakup, which I love. Um, there's like some miscommunication things in there, but they're all resolved fairly quickly um, in the sense that, you know, you, I don't mind miscommunication when like you both don't understand the thing that's happening and you go away for a chapter or two and then you come back together and you discuss it and you resolve things. That doesn't bother me. When it's the whole book, I have problems, but when it's something that's just like, you know, in a few, um, chapters able to be resolved. Don't mind that. Really good romance. It was done really well. I really enjoyed it. I have read, this is the second book by Livy Hart that I have read, and I really enjoyed both of her romances that I've read so far, and I do plan to um, pop into, I know she has um, Planes, Trains, and All the Feels, I think, is the one that came out in between the two that I've read. Um, so I do plan to read that one 
soon as well. Next, we're going to talk about two books that were books two and three in a series and both got a 4.5 out of 5 stars. They are The Inquisition and The Battle Mage by Taryn Mathrew. As I said, these are books two and three in the Summoner series. I loved this series. I gave every book in the series rounded wise, got a five stars. I love our main character, Fletcher. The series starts out with Fletcher as a commoner in the society where Typically the first born of the royal families or like the lords and ladies of the families, they typically are born with this power where they can be a summoner and that means they can summon demons from the demon realm that helps them fight against um, the evil orcs who are trying to take over their territory. There are also gnomes and elves in this series. Um, the gnomes and the elves are on the side of the humans, though the humans treat them kind of as like lesser class people. There's a lot of prejudices and things that go on in this series. I loved this whole series. Loved the whole series. Cannot recommend it highly enough. I think I bought the first book in like 2014 or 2015 when it came out. They have literally been sitting on my shelves the entire time. I just picked up the first book at the end of last year and the sadness that I have that I have been sitting on these for that long you don't even understand. So our, our commoner Fletcher finds out that he actually has the ability to summon a demon accidentally and he accidentally summons this demon named Ignatius who is a salamander demon who is not a very common demon and he ends up being sent off to the school where they teach the summoner kids how to be good summoners. The series definitely has a lot of elements of um, I think someone explained it as like being part like Pokemon, part D&D, &D, part World of Warcraft. Um, and it really does have like all of those kind of vibes to it. Uh, there's a lot of political drama. There's a lot of drama between different races of creatures. Like I said, the gnomes, the elves and the humans and also the orcs. Um, it takes place both in the human realm and also the demon realm at some point in the series you end up in the demon realm and there's lots of amazing characters both in our main characters age bracket and also the older people and there's just a lot that goes on there and throughout the series we get to see our characters grow and um become more adept at their skills and better with their demons and i cannot scream about this series enough. If you're not reading it, if you haven't read it, you definitely should at least check out the first book. It was a wild ride. It was a lovely time. It ends on a cliffhanger. The second book ends on a cliffhanger. The second and third book both kind of have like these two parts where there's like one major thing happening in the first part of the book and one major thing happening in the second part of the book. And I think for this time period when this book series was written, those would have been completely separate books. I think that you know, how many book series did we get that ended up being five or seven or eight books that really should have just been a trilogy? And this series is just a trilogy. Like they didn't put in filler chapters. They didn't put in like things that didn't need to be there, but it still feels like a whole story. It still feels like there's so many different things happening and time passes. I think probably at least two years between the first and third book has encompassed two to three years. And none of it feels rushed. It doesn't feel like you're not getting enough of the story. It doesn't feel like you're not getting enough backstory. Like everything is there and it's just done so well. I love it. And I, again, will be screaming about this book, this series for a while. Next at a 4.75 out of 5 stars, we have God Killer by Hannah Kaner. I did not expect to like this book as much as I did. This book has like four main characters. It has Kissin, who is a God Killer. God Killer. Inara, who is a, I think Inara is like nine or 10 or 12 or somewhere around in there. She's a young girl who finds herself in need of protection. And also she has a god attached to her named Skeddy, who is one of our other main point of view characters. Um, Kissin, you know, normally would have killed Skeddy, but when Skeddy and Inara are connected, uh, Kissin's like, I don't think I can do this. I'm gonna have to figure out a different way to get rid of this god. And then our fourth character is Elogast, who has his own story. And I like that in the synopsis for this story, it doesn't tell you what Elo's main goal is. And so I'm not going to tell you either because I like learning what's going on with Elo as the story progresses. But mainly it's these four characters going on this journey that ends up leading them to one another and trying to help each other 
resolve this goal that they each have. They all have different goals, but they kind of go together. So they're able to work together to complete each other's goals. Um, you have to like traveling books to like this. If you don't like traveling books, you're not going to like this. You may like it, but you're not going to love it. It's definitely a traveling book, but it's very short. I thought this was going to be a duology. I just read the second book. It's definitely not a duology. So know that going into it. But I did really enjoy this. Like I said, I gave it a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I loved the character work. I loved the backstory. I loved the world building um, and like getting to know about this world and like the gods and why people are against the gods and why people are for the gods. Um, why Kissin is the way that she is. Um, Kissin is this, like this fantastic backstory that is just like so heartbreaking and traumatizing and just so much going on with her. And... Um, learning more about them as the, as the story progresses and learning about her family and um, her friends and things like that. It was really interesting. So I really enjoyed this book. Highly recommend. And the last book that we're going to talk about is also the last book that I read of the month. And it was also a 4.75 out of 5 stars. And that is Under This Red Rock by Mindy McGinnis. I finished this book about a week prior to going to a book signing with Mindy, um, where she sat down at my local indie and we talked about this book, but also some of the books that she's working on in the future, or a book that she's working on in the future, which sounds super exciting. I'm very excited to get to uh, when it comes out. And also just talking about random things as always. Um, what happens is I end up sitting there talking to Mindy long after everyone else has left and we chat about books that we're reading and things because we're both chatty people and that's what happens. But yes, we did do that. Uh, we did talk about this book and basically the story came to her from, uh, having an experience with auditory hallucinations and having taken her daughters to the Ohio Caverns. Um, we all have said, those of us who have read it, who live in Ohio, and Mindy is also from Ohio, uh, have definitely said like it feels, this, the book feels like it's set here. It's very homey for us. A lot of Mindy's books do read that way. They do feel very Ohio-esque, which makes sense because that's where she's from. This book follows a main character who has a really tragic backstory, and this does deal with a lot of really heavy topics, as a lot of Mindy's books do. Um, she lives with her grandparents. Her father walked out on them when she was very young. Her mother died very tragically in a car accident that her and her brother survived. And her brother has recently killed himself. So there's like a lot going on in this girl's world. She hears voices. There's a voice of a girl under her bed. There's a voice of a man in her closet. And there is a voice that follows her around that all it ever says is shitbird. And she knows from past experiences that the only place that she doesn't hear these voices is in the caverns, in the caves, um, at this place where she has been. And so she gets a job there because she's really trying to hold everything together. She's really trying to be okay for her grandparents. Um, she loves and appreciates her grandparents and everything that they've had to do, including coming out of retirement and going back to work so that they can help take care of her. She really is struggling to just make sure that she's okay, even though she's not okay. And the book follows her like making friends with people at the caverns and it's on the back of the book. So it's not a spoiler. One of her friends from the caverns is brutally murdered and left in the caves for them to find. And because of the hallucinations and things that she's having, she begins to wonder if maybe she's the one who killed her friend. And then the story progresses from there of us like figuring out who actually is the bad guy and what happened. And though the main character is a bit of an unreliable narrator because she does have hallucinations, um, I don't feel like it's one of those ones where the story relies heavily on those hallucinations. Um, there's a lot of really good bits of this story where the mental health part of it is very well done, very well put together, um, very respectful of people who might actually have those diagnoses, um, which you don't typically see a lot. And it is definitely not a book where like the mental health issue is the problem all along. Like, you know what I mean? You know what, you know, those books where like, it's because she was her own sister the whole time. It's, it's not one of those. Um, it is a very dark book. It doesn't necessarily have a happy ending. Um, it's, it's, it's an interesting one. It's, it's definitely an interesting story that I really enjoyed. I have 
Um, I think this is like my third book by Mindy that I've read. I've got many more on my shelves that I need to get to. Um, but I really enjoyed this one. I haven't disliked any that I have read so far, basically. Um, I love our main character and her crazy and the way that it progresses throughout the story and how you learn where those voices came from and what they represent for her was really interesting. I do have like some spoiler notes in my review on Goodreads if you want to check out more of like where I think where the voices came from. If you want to know like uh, more about the auditory hallucinations, there's a little, there's a couple of notes in there. That was the last book that I read in March and a fantastic read. So this is the giant stack of books. This is actually a pretty small stack of books considering I read 18 books, but this is the stack of books plus some that I read in the month of March. Let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these, if you would like to talk about them. Let's do that because I would love to. If you made it this far in the video, leave me a fish emoji down below. Why a fish? I don't know. It was just the first thing that came to me. Fish. Leave me a fish emoji if you made it this far in the video. And if you like this video and like to see more of my face, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!